we will wait a couple of seconds until everyone is here and until everyone has gathered around. And yeah, then we can kick off this new and AI stream. Sounds good. All right, so I think we can start. Um, so yeah, hello and welcome everyone to today's new AI stream. Um, like always, uh, I've gathered like the most interesting releases from the car past couple of days. Uh, with me is Emmanuel. Uh, yeah, you probably know him by now. Um, um. So yeah, let's jump right into the first topic. So the first thing that was released is Jarvis 1. And this is basically an agent that can perform and plan um, multi -step, multiple steps um, within Minecraft. So this is an agent that operates basically within Minecraft. And here you can see kind of the tree of things uh, that you can craft and yeah, how you can advance in the game. We actually have seen something pretty similar uh, some time ago. So this one um, was called Voyager. And it was basically the same concept that we have like this agent that was controlled by a large language model within Minecraft and it had to perform various tasks. Uh, yeah, and now we basically have this improved new version for this. Um, so yeah, what does this do exactly? So it has a very complex kind of structure uh, internally on how to plan things and then on how to execute things. And it also has some self-improvement built in, which is pretty cool. Um, so right here, you can basically see, this is the task right here. Mm -hmm. So given the Minecraft Iron Axe, smelt and craft the Minecraft Shears with an empty inventory. So yeah, the task is to basically smelt something. Uh, first of all, find this, uh, then smelt it, um, then craft these shears. So right here, you can see all the different epochs. So in epoch one, it tries all these things, but then in the end, uh, it lacks a furnace as a tool. So it cannot complete the task. So then Epoch 2 does all these things. And then it has lack of fuel sometimes. But then in Epoch 3, you can see that it does all these things. Um, and then in the end, it actually works out. Which is pretty cool to see this kind of self-improvement within an agent within Minecraft. Um, so yeah. Yeah, no, this is very nice. It's very fun to see how creative people get with Minecraft. Uh, like you said, we saw the other... Uh, the other agent before, uh, which was also pretty cool on its own. Um, but I, I find interesting uh, uh, the architecture behind these these uh, applications into Minecraft because people say like, sure, it's cool, but it's just Minecraft at the end of the day. But uh, I think you can apply this to to maybe not the same thing, but uh, the main architecture and the main idea behind the two other things. Mm -hmm. Uh, from like a high level point of view, it's pretty much uh, like self, like the detail, this type of agents that reach a conclusion, reflect on that, and then go again. Uh, but yeah, no, it's very very cool uh, to see it implemented into into this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, for example, we can also see some more tasks right here. So pick up a Minecraft chest, um, and basically then this is the generated plan that the agent has to execute. Um, and yeah, basically right here, you can see that all these things are done um, after each other. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, right here we have the, we are uh, mining three logs, then we are crafting planks from these logs, uh, then we are crafting the crafting table, and then with this crafting table, we can finally craft the chest. So yeah, pretty can cool you, stuff. Can you, can you go back to the architecture to take a, a better look at that? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I think that's the most important or most interesting, at least for me, piece of, of uh, info here. That's also important to mention is that this agent is now multimodal. So back, yes. in, back in when this was released, like there were none multimodal models out there, or at least not these capable models. Um, so yeah, you can see right here that basically we have a task that is given. Um, and then we jump into this block right here. And this is the one in the middle that gets explained a little bit more in detail. So we have the multimodal language model um, that basically can retrieve and add memories, which is pretty cool. Then this creates this plan. And then this plan goes into the planner. Um, yeah. 
And then this plan right here can be used by the controller who actually does all these things like uh, keyboard and mouse inputs. Uh, yeah, and this is reflected in the Minecraft environment. Yeah, I think I think the most uh, interesting part of that for me is that multimodality memory. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, there is a paper there that talks about that. So I would be very interested in reading about that. I always found interesting how how these systems handle memory. Uh, we've had conversations about this. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, I think this is definitely worth uh, to take a look at. I also read something about um, kind of self um, self managing memory. Which is pretty cool because we have seen like standalone projects that do these kinds of things, but now uh, having this built in into an agent is actually pretty cool. So yeah, this is a paper. If you're interested in learning more, you can find the link in the description. Uh, yeah, and then read through this in detail. All right, yeah. So that's a pretty cool thing to start things off. Um, let's jump into the second one. So this is a release from Meta uh, AI. So this is a text-to-video model called Emo Video, um, and we can have a look at some of the results right here. So these are four-second-long videos, um, and I really like the quality of these videos. Um, I agree. We've seen like a very steep increase in the quality of AI-generated videos. Um, yeah, and these are just just amazing. Like this robot walking right here. Um, the temporal coherence between all the different frames is very, very great. There's no real flickering going on. Um, so and the, the physics behind it, like, it seems like a very coherent motion. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So um, also the, the, the liquid on the left. Yeah, yeah. Now this is very cool, very, very cool. Like, just from, like, from a purely, like, uh, point of view of how things are moving. Uh, not only, like, the frames, like you said, because we used to have, like, this generation, but they all look different or like they wouldn't even keep the same style but this is like super smooth yeah yeah, definitely. yeah the, the birds the birds flying like the waves crashing no no this is very very like big jump to what we had before yeah and like, very, very nice to see creating these from just the text is also just pretty cool um so yeah they have also released a paper for this um and right here we can also have a look at these benchmarks um so right here uh, basically, we compare it to other models. Um, so we have Pika, Gen2, I Imogen. Um, so yeah, all basically all the big recent ones. Um, and right here we have the win rates um, that were picked by real humans um, against these other models. And you can see that the win rates are pretty, pretty good for this new MO video model. Uh, like it's up to, I guess, 80% most of the time. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty cool to see such a great improvement in this space. Yeah, and I think this is going to like raise a, a challenge for prompt engineering. <laughs> mm -hmm. Once uh, we get more than four second videos, because how do you prompt a video? Yeah, right? yeah. So I guess that's going to be a fun journey on its own once, it's, once we get there. Uh, but for now, I think this is pretty cool. I think we haven't seen anything like this before. Like you said, so literally state of the art results. Uh, I'm very happy to see that there's a development also about that because we don't see a lot of text to video things out there, if any. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty cool, I think. Yeah, for sure. I can't wait to uh, like write a prompt for my own uh, kind of movie, <laughs> AI generated yeah. movie. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and something that is pretty similar to this. So we have the model right here, this Pika model. Um, but basically, um, this company right here called Pika Labs um, basically is introducing Pika 1.0. It's currently in closed beta, um, but like the results right here, oops, like these short videos. Yeah, this is, this. okay, I saw the, what's the name? No, no. Okay, never mind. I'll see when we finish watching the video.
yeah, so this is pretty cool. Like these short clips right here. I mean, they are also very short clips, but uh, yeah, they, they look pretty good. So I can't wait to actually yeah, test this out. This looks really good. Like, this is the type of things that I'm a bit like a skeptic to, to, to believe they're as good as they're showing here, because this is really good. This is really, really good. And I, did they talk about how long are they able to, to generate I have videos? Not, I have not found a lot of information about this. Um, but yeah, I'm sure that these generated videos will not be super long. Just, I guess it will probably be the same length than these short clips that are shown right here, like three or four seconds. Yeah, uh, I, I, I am a bit less skeptical just because I saw that the raccoon, that's what I was looking for, had four ears. <laughs> so, you know, for some, for some reason at this stage, doing some error, it's a bit, uh, like okay yeah this might be <laughs> this might be real but this is pretty cool i think this is very very nice uh yeah i'm surprised that i didn't see about it i guess it has a lot to do with the fact that it's closed beta right now but yeah super excited to be able to play with this once it's out i'm funny how at this point it's play with this rather than uh, use the technology yeah yeah um yeah i guess this was released uh today this post right here um, so okay, yeah, that makes didn't sense. didn't see it yet. Um, so yeah, watch our new and AI stream, and you will always have like the latest news. Um, all right. So after these uh, text to video models, uh, let's jump over to something from Microsoft. So Microsoft released Orca two, um, and the whole point of this Orca two is teaching small models how to reason. Um, and basically what they did is they took a larger model, like GPT-4, and then created a synthetic data set um, to then teach mm -hmm. these smaller models how to reason. Um, so yeah, right here, just what I said. Um, and we can see some benchmarks right here, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can see right here, we have two different model sizes. So we have Orca 7B and Orca 2 13B. And this is compared to Llama 2 Chat 70B and Wizard LM 70B. And we have a bunch of different reasoning, uh, multi step reasoning, common sense reasoning benchmarks. Um, and this is basically their score. So you can see that Orca 2 with only 13 billion parameters outperforms Llama 2 Chat 7 billion parameters, which is pretty amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, I'm always a bit, again, skeptical when it comes to these benchmarks, because often we have, uh, unfortunately, cherry pink, uh, well parameters that are being shown. But regardless, uh, we're talking about how, how many billion difference in parameters, right? So, yeah, that does talk a lot about how good this uh, method seems to be. So I, I expect to hear a lot more about it in the upcoming days. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so this is an official Microsoft release, um, and they usually follow up with more things uh, in this space. Um, so yeah, I wonder what's the, the 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 need of calling all these things animal names. <laughs> We're not very creative. Yeah. Apparently, Falcon, Olga, Orca, Llama, uh, all the palm models are also animals. Their versions. I have not thought about this actually. Like, yeah, you're right. Uh, um, all right. So yeah, like I said, this is also uh, yeah. This basically is a paper that was released. Um, so yeah, if you are interested in reading through this in detail, um, yeah, you can check this out. You can also find the link in the description. Um, yeah, and let's jump over to our next topic, which is Anthropics Claude two point which is very exciting. We are getting a lot of new things. So we firstly, we get the 200k context window. So this is what clause was basically uh, the most useful before um, the new GPT model, because we had this huge context window that no other large language model had. So yeah, we could process long documents, um, yeah, entire books, movies, everything in one prompt. Um, then we saw that OpenAI released their new model. 
um, GPT-4 Turbo, which had 128k context size. Um, yeah, and now, shortly after this, Anthropic is following up with this 200k token context window, which is pretty amazing. And with this, there are also some other changes. So we get tool use, and we also get reduced hallucinations. So they claim it as 2x decrease in hallucination rates, which is pretty cool to see. Um, and then also this improved tool use. And we've seen that, for example, with uh, like just normal agents or these new GPT GPTs, uh, we've seen that tool use is just becoming more and more important because like this is what large this is what makes large language models uh, actually useful uh, in real world situations. Um, so yeah, pretty cool to see this. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's crazy to think that a few months ago we were excited about a 32k uh, parameter window, and shortly we are, we're just like 200k, which is a lot. It's a lot, a lot. Uh, unfortunately, I have not heard like very nice things about uh, performance. You know, we already had uh, this with Claude. Uh, it has a fair amount of hallucinations, so half the hallucinations. I'm not sure if it's still. Uh, you would say it's good. But uh, just the pure fact of the 200k window is uh, for sure a competitive advantage. We, we thought for a, it came like very very close to to GPT Turbo, right? Like a few days after. Uh, yes, yes, it was very close. So like I, GPT and OpenAI had not have the chance to actually take the lead on this, which I thought they did. Like they they did for for good in air quotes uh, when they released Turbo, but. Here you have 200k. Uh, I have not had the chance to, to to use it. I would like to to give it a go before saying what I just said that it's not that great. So, guys, go check it out, and you can let us know next stream what do you think. Uh, but it's very cool, very very cool to see uh, such a fast advancement in the field. I think. Yeah, and uh, like you said, like uh, hallucinations are a real problem when you have these huge context windows. Um, but yeah, with this benchmark right here, you can see that actually um, the more things you put in there, um, the less these errors um, will be there, which is pretty interesting. I agree. Uh, because usually for now, I only saw benchmarks where like starting from 60% of the context length, the answers got significantly worse. Uh, yeah, yeah. You had more errors. Um, but this does not seem to be the case here. Um, so yeah, super exciting to see this. Yeah, yeah for sure. They should give it a, a go. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's jump over to the next one. So I just want to touch on this really quick. Um, so we all know Langchain by now. And we know that Langchain is officially available in uh, Python and JavaScript. But now this person right here basically recreated the entire thing for the Go language. So yeah. I know that there are a lot of applications that are built with Go. So if you're interested yeah. in building applications um, with Langchain in Go, yeah, feel, feel free to use this uh, package right here. Um, yeah, and then build some awesome AI applications. Yeah, I mean, it's good that Langchain is expanding, uh, so to say, because we saw that there was a, some issues going on after GPTs, well, after this whole OpenAI release went out. Uh, I also saw that they immediately created their own version of the GPTs, but you can connect other models if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we will have a look at and, this in a second. Oh yeah, great. I feel like Langchain is one of the companies that need to be very careful choosing what what next steps to take, mm -hmm. because they can be easily uh, shadowed by these expansive capabilities of the the larger models. But so yeah, it's good good to see that they're they're growing so so to say. Uh, okay, let's let's go to the the next one, which I think it's the GPTs, right? Um, yes. Open GPTs. Yes. So yeah, we have all seen the release of OpenAI's GPTs. Um, they're pretty cool. They're pretty useful for some tasks, but of course we need an open source solution for this, um, and this is what Langchain aims to do here. Uh, so yeah, it's called OpenGPTs, and this is basically the same thing as the OpenAI's GPTs, um, but 
of course you can kind of hack this and add your own things, uh, add your own behavior. And there are also some features in here that OpenAI does not have. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at this. Uh, maybe let's have a first look at the interface right here. So this is where you can actually create uh, these GPTs. So you can select a model. Um, so pretty cool that you already have a model selection. With OpenAI, you can of course only have the GPT models. Um, you can add a system message. So that's all pretty similar to the GPTs. But then this is where it gets interesting. We have tools and there are already a lot of really cool tools. So we have the web search yeah. with DuckDuckGo. Uh, we also have this other kind of web search provider. Uh, we have retrieval, look up information and uploaded files. So we have these uh, custom knowledge files, also pretty similar to OpenAI. Um, then we have this archive search for just uh, scientific papers and everything. Uh, we have the use search. We have these SEC filings, press releases, uh, just, I guess, medical information and Wikipedia. Um, yeah, then you can drag and drop files in here. Uh, that's very useful. And this is also pretty cool. We can create a public link so we can actually share our open GPT. Um, so this is everything that you can do on the website right here, but there's more. So let's jump into the GitHub repo right here. And here you can see more features. So you can define custom tools, which is very nice if you want to do some custom things. Um, so yeah, for example, this Python REPL, so you can execute code, firstly generate code and then actually execute it. Um, we have the analytics that's using Langsmith in the background. Um, yeah, I guess this is like the most interesting thing right here that you can add your own tools that this GPT can then use because the OpenAI GPTs are very limited in what they can do. Um, yeah. That is true. Well, Langchain has always offered like larger flexibility even before we had these uh, functionalities of uh, retrieval within the GPTs. Uh, I think, you know, I think it would be great if just from the interface that you show that you create the GPTs, you would be able to generate an endpoint. That would be super cool uh, to work with. Uh, but no, in general, I really like the 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 also the the quick response because this was also a few days after GPTs were announced. Like we we're talking three, four days, maybe something like that, right? Yes, yes. I guess Langchain so, has like so many things built in already that building something like this is then not super hard to do. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, you might be right there. Um, yeah, S but still, this is very exciting to see, uh, like right here, you can also see how this looks exactly. Um, so yeah, the human writes something, then the AI chooses to, for example, just answer by itself or to use a tool for this. So right here, you can see that the DuckDuck search, uh, tool gets used with a specific query. Uh, yeah, this just then goes on and on. It's basically an agent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but this is super cool because you can like self host it. You can just add your own things to the entire system. Um, so yeah, very cool. And of course you can use it like within the Langchain ecosystem. So you have like all these kinds of different, uh, document loaders. That's very powerful. That's coming from Langchain. Uh, you have these 60 plus vector database integrations, which is also very useful. Um, yeah, chat history in your own database. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, I agree. I like. I very like. I I like very much the the whole Langchain environment. And like I said, it's it's nice to see that they keep coming. They they keep uh, match. Well, not matching, but they're still there in the race. Uh, uh, when it comes to be relevant, I guess, and useful, of course. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always super good to have these kind of open source solutions for something that a big tech company just released. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Then this is also something that I just want to showcase really quick. If you are building something with Whisper, you probably know that these transcriptions take a long time to actually generate. So if you're doing something that is over a minute, 
like significantly longer than over a minute, like a movie, a podcast. Um, these are the usual use cases. Um, it takes a lot of hours to transcribe something. And right here, they did some optimizations to the Whisper architecture to basically transcribe 150 minutes uh, of audio in less than yeah 100 seconds. So that's, that's crazy. That's pretty awesome to see. Um, you can see some benchmarks right here uh, and what exactly uh, is done within each tier. But you can see like, yeah, this is still pretty, pretty fast for 150 minutes of audio. Yeah. Uh, and I saw you can also combine this because one of the main problems that I usually hear from people that you're using Whisper is that Whisper does not support any kind of speaker diarization, um, and yeah, with this you can combine this with the Hugging Face uh, API, and then basically use this uh, by a note to diarize the audio clips. Nice. Now the only issue I see with all these models is uh, language, because mm -hmm. already Whisper I think it doesn't have the best performance in specific languages, so mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, this, of course, focus in uh, optimizing the performance, but uh, I guess it's only addressable to the like English speaking market. Maybe not market, but I guess you get my point. Um, I think so, but I also read that like Whisper is one of the best uh, languages for uh, the best model for for multiple or many many languages out there. Yes, yes, but I'm not sure if these uh, versions of Whisper also have those bases covered, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but it would be good to to, to check out. Uh, so if you guys have any projects with Whisper, please, uh, it would be good to get some some yeah. more inside the info on this, because it's pretty interesting. It's also, I think it's super relevant, um, because the like you don't know this if you live in the uh, like English-speaking environment, but... Uh, all of these solutions become unapplicable, I would say, if they do not cover like these other uh, possible, again, markets. I wouldn't say markets, but just uh, for sake of the point. So I think that's very important to to consider when when looking at these uh, models. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess this is also something uh, that you should only use if you are actually needing this kind of fast transcriptions. Um, yeah, because there will be some quality loss right here. Uh, but yeah, if you need really, really quick uh, transcriptions, then this is probably the way to go. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to showcase this really quick because yeah, Whisper has a lot of application uh, kind of yeah. use cases. Um, yeah. All right, and these were the most interesting things. Um, so. If you are not following us on GitHub already, I highly recommend like following us here. Um, we also release or we have tons of cool uh, repositories that you can use for your projects. Um, yeah, and of course, uh, make sure to visit LabLab AI uh, to actually enroll in one of our new recent events. Um, so you can see we have a lot of events coming up here with True Era, Next Gen GPT Hackathon. Um, yeah. So make sure to enroll here. You can also find a lot of tutorials on the site. Um, so yeah, find a team and yeah, build a really awesome application and have fun while doing it. All right, I guess that's all for today. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. We will have the same stream again, uh, same date, same uh, hour, same time. Uh, in Every exactly week. One week, exactly. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.